All right, what is up, good people? I'm here to share today this video with you. I'll try to keep it short, but this is a tutorial in how to move cryptos. And for part one, I'm just going to focus on how to use exchanges because it's really important right now with the collapse of many exchanges with FTX, uh, Celsius, Nexo, and now the recent FUD with KuCoin. It's uncertain what might happen with these exchanges. And if your money is on that exchange, you may lose it all. So it's really important to keep track of this stuff and know how to move your cryptos around because the adage is if it's not your keys, it's not your cryptos. So it's really important to keep track of this stuff. And it's really important to know how to do it quickly. And I aim to show you just that in the short video here. So feel free to follow along, bookmark or share this video if it's useful to you. And as I aim to create more content around these useful tips, not just how to buy the next 100x meme coin, but actually show you some useful stuff that can help you learn how to trade crypto and how to make money online. Hopefully this is helpful. So we're going to go into the KuCoin exchange today. As an example, I'm going to cover how to move money off an exchange and from one exchange to another exchange in this particular example today. You need to think about ATMs. So networks and chains are very similar to an ATM. You think about in different parts of the world, if you're on vacation or something, you may not have access to your local bank. So therefore you might need to use an ATM and what happens at an ATM Sometimes they try to charge you for using a different network. If it's Swift, if it's a different type of network system, they have fees that are incurred for that. So think about moving cryptos, like moving money from different ATMs. So there's different prices that they'll charge for it using different networks. And then also you need to select the correct network. And you'll see in the example here, BEP20, ERC20, TRC, um, BSC, you might see these terms right here refer to different networks. So when it's like Binance, Ethereum, Tron, these are different networks to move money around. That's all you need to know and think about. But it's important to recognize what these are here because you're going to have to select it. As you'll see in the example, you're going to know, have to know what token is what and to select it in order to send it on the right network. And because what happens if you don't select the right network, your money is gone. It's basically you're the custodian of your money now and your cryptos. So it's up to you to know how to send it the right way without losing it. And it's all happened to us if you're at a beginner point in your journey with crypto here. Maybe you've done it already. Maybe you've lost money. So this is why you're watching this video now. Hopefully this will help you fix all these problems in the future and keep custody of your own cryptos. Additionally, crypto is like an email model because like email addresses, right? What happens when you send an email to somebody? Has you ever gotten a email that's bounced back? Has it ever not gone through? What are the issues with this? This is digital technology and this is something to consider because you can think of moving cryptos the same way that you would send an email. The email has to be a valid signature. So when you go to send your email, you have to make sure you type it in right. That's the type of thing we'll learn today as the wallet address has to be exact and typed in correctly to go to the right place, right? Same thing as the email. And then if you get a wrong email, where does it go? Sometimes it gets bounced back and lets you know that there's no such address or it didn't get submitted properly and you'll get a response like this. It'll say like a transaction ID. You tried to send something to a certain place and it was rejected and here's why or whatever. And what happens in that case? Well, it depends because like I said before, if you send if you're sending your money similar to an email address to the wrong email address or the wrong place, where does it go? Like in most cases, almost impossible to get it back. So it's something it's really important to consider this and keep uh, keep track of it. So here are the solutions here. There's different options. And in this tutorial today, I'm covered part one, which is basically from one exchange to another exchange. The differences here, there's a CEX and DEX are called uh, centralized exchange and a decentralized exchange. I'll delve into that a little bit later, but there's a lot of different choices. So for you, it's multiple factors. So what, what are we looking at here? Is it because you're using that exchange because they have KYC, know your customer for your safety, or maybe you don't want uh, KYC. There's accounts that you can use that don't use this at all. You just sign in with a Web3 wallet or an email address and you're good to go. You don't need any of this stuff for income tax or any of that, that stuff that maybe you're trying to avoid. I don't know, up to you. Also the funding rates of these exchanges, how much does it cost to keep your cryptos in a leverage trade or keep it on a trade, the fees that are involved when actually purchasing the crypto in the first place. How much do they charge you as an exchange fee? What's the safety of that exchange? That's the reason I'm moving some of my cryptos off KuCoin is because uh, some of the people who are connected with KuCoin are under investigation right now for money laundering or fraud or whatever it might be 
regardless of if they're guilty or innocent. This is just something to consider because is your money safe on that exchange? And then there's also other things you want to consider with that exchange. Therefore, not leaving your money on exchange and moving it into a hot wallet or a cold wallet, which I believe is the best solution, might be the best option for you. Hot wallet, the difference between an exchange and hot wallet here. Hot wallet is online and it's connected. You can sign in to Web3 platforms using your online wallet. There's examples of Brave Wallet, MetaMask, Phantom Wallet. There's a ton of them out there, Trust Wallet. And as you'll explore these wallets, you'll find out that some of them don't hold all these tokens based on the networks that they support. They might be limiting to you and on different platforms. So for example, there's a Brave Wallet. What tokens can you put in there? There's a Phantom Wallet. What tokens do those support? And what are the fees associated with it? So all these things, hopefully I'll make videos and further lessons to show you why that's important and what the hot wallet does and why you'd want to choose more than one. Maybe don't try to diversify and try to have multiple wallets because of things like wallet drainers and trying uh, scams and things like that to avoid getting your tokens lost from scams and not clicking on things um, that are not verified and legit links they could drain your wallet. So therefore I have a cold wallet. The cold wallet is a cold storage unit and I'll show on screen a video that I also made about a great uh, biometric cold wallet that I have that I use personally. I love it. This is the best solution because it's offline. It has the best privacy, uh, the best security, the best safety. It has a lot of different features. So if you want something like a fingerprint scanner, you can have that included. It's very safe because you never have to plug it into your computer. It works wirelessly. Some of them are waterproof and air gapped, so they're pretty much indestructible. And they come in a metal box or metal container that keeps them free from damage. And so that's something to consider. But today we're going to cover this solution right here, which is transferring from one exchange to another. And so the steps are as follows, and you'll see in the actual screen recording here that I'm about to create, you can follow along with these steps. So, so bookmark it, save it, practice it, because this is a useful tool that can come in handy and you want to be able to do it quickly in case there's issues like there are now. And so the first step we're going to do here is choose a token. So what token are we moving? Where are we moving it from? Where are we moving it to? Is that other token supported on the next exchange? So that's important to know. So before you move anything, you're going to want to choose the token that you want to move and make sure it's supported where you're trying to send it. Secondly, you're going to choose the network. Now you're going to see on the screen recording, there's options for different networks. Remember we talked about BRC, BSC, ERC, TRC, all these different things. These are the networks that you're going to choose. And based on the factors of how much money you want to move and how quickly and how much traffic is on that network is going to uh, factor into the price. And you'll see some of these cryptos, especially Ethereum and other things can cost a lot of money to move a small amount of money. And therefore that's important to know if that's a factor for you to move your money across different networks, just like ATM, you're at Disneyland or you're at an amusement park or something. Why do they charge you three, four dollars just to get out twenty dollars at ATM? This is the same type of thing here, right? Think about this. Step three is you're going to submit a request. So when we create, as you'll see on the screen recording, when you create a wallet address, and you're going to either do that by scanning a QR code or copy and pasting an address or generating an address and then copying it and pasting it in the other app, that's how you submit the request. And then to confirm a withdrawal request, it's going to ask you to either use authorization app or an email, or it might send you a text message code or something else to confirm that it's you through two factor authentication or some other system or something like this. And that's pretty much it. There's like four steps here. I'm about to show you in the screen recording really quickly, exactly how to do that. Okay. So here we are on our trading app here. This is KuCoin. I have a small amount of Harmony one that I might want to move. And so this might look different for you depending on a different exchange that you're using, but try to figure this out the best that you can. The accounts need to be in a funding account in order to be removed. So if you're in a trading account, that means this money is ready to be traded back and forth. So you want to hit transfer down here. And then as we stated before, we want to move it from a trading to a funding account, right? So we want to swap that to make sure it's going from a trading account to a funding account so it can be withdrawed. So that's that's a nuance. You might not see it on your exchange, but that's how it is on this one. Um, in some instances, when we're trying to move this money, it's advisable to move a small amount. But however, to me, this is a small amount. So this is only, let's see, 38 something bucks. But just as best practice, 
what you might want to do here is just shoot over, let's say, a couple dollars. So let's just do like five bucks. What would that be? Uh, six bucks or something like that. If we're going to send how much? Uh, let's see. Probably about 250 of these coins would equal to seven or eight bucks. So we're going to send a small amount as a test just to make sure everything's connected and everything goes through. Because again, if you don't, and it doesn't go through and you get something wrong, that money's gone forever. So imagine if you're moving thousands of dollars, really important. So at this point, we're gonna move six bucks, move it over there. So we moved it to our funding account here. And so now we're gonna go back here to the funding and we're gonna select that token. Harmony one, there's $6.33 available. And now at the bottom down here, down here we can see that there's a withdrawal section right down here so now we're going to go over to our other exchange and i've already typed it in harmony one so we're going to deposit these coins to another exchange so it says here that the change deposit address please operate after generating a new address on the deposit page so you click this making sure we're using the right coin right here it said network one at this point there's only one network to choose right here so we're going to select that one choose it going to generate an address and now this is a disclaimer showing that it's going to um, make sure we, we have everything authenticated so our email is correct and all this and that so basically now it's created this code you can see this code down here that's probably 50 characters long or whatever this is our wallet address so now it's created a place to store these tokens on a different exchange we're just going to hit copy now we've copied that we're going to go back to the other exchange where we want to withdraw. So we got the right token right here, Harmony One. We're going to click withdraw. Now again, this has our email configured, but it's also asking for an authenticator app or two-factor authentication if you have it set up. But in this case, my email is bound with the phone, so it's ready to go. I just hit skip right here. And now it says, okay, Harmony One token right here. Let me get out my marker pen. Say we got the right token there, that's exactly right. The wallet address, we're gonna just paste that code that was stored on our uh, device by hitting paste, and there's that right code. Ends in 20x35, so we're gonna go back here just to confirm, right down here, does it end in 20x35? Yes, it does, and that seems to be the right wallet address. And so we're gonna go back here, make sure, double check, and then as far as network, when we click this one here, in this instance, there's only one network. But in some instances, you may see Bitcoin, Ethereum, TRC20, something like this. Like I said, this is a different network. In this case, all that there is is one network to send this token. So we're going to go down here and hit max. And this is going to send our $6.83 right here. As you can see uh, right here, it's going to show us how much is being sent. So you see the withdrawal amount. It says, here's how much is in your funding account, here's how much is in your trading account, and you're sending this much. And in some cases, you have an option to send it fast or slow, depending on the network. But basically, just down at the bottom, it just shows you, say, how much that it's going to cost to move it. There's a fee down here at the very bottom. You can see uh, trading fee is subject to change on the selected network or selected chain, so this price may vary. So it's just going to show you exactly how much you're sending. And then when you're ready, you're going to hit the withdraw button. And so in this case, I'm sending, let's see here. Twelve sixty-two. No, that's a maximum. Withdrawal amount. Just make sure on this one, because this one we were trying to send two sixty, I believe. So out of that two sixty, it's gonna charge us forty-one tokens to send it. So it's only going to send 218. You can see down here at the bottom, this is an example. We're going to send 260 Harmony One tokens, but it's going to cost us 41 to send it. So some of that money is going to be eaten up just by moving these things around. That's important to note. And then also the total amount that we're sending is going to be 218. So again, we're doing this just as a test to make sure everything works. So we don't lose all the money before we send a uh, thousand tokens over. So we just hit next step right here. We just go hit withdrawal. And now it's gonna say, hey, here's a uh, confirmation. So you make sure everything is correct here. You say, here's the amount, here's the wallet it's going to, here's the amount you're trying to withdraw. Make sure everything's legit before you, you might lose all your money. <laughs> and then just hit confirm. 
Now it's going to ask you for your trading password and verification code. So I'm going to enter the password. And now that I've done that, I'm going to hit the verification code. It's going to send me a text message with a six digit code I need to enter. Here it comes. There it is. Four seven four eight two five, and then you just hit confirm. There you go. And now, in a moment or two, you're going to see a submission and a confirmation. Okay, so here you go. The total time it took about two and a half minutes for this one to be sent over, but as you can see right here, it has. The total asset right there at $6.89. So it took a little bit of fees to send it over, but ultimately we're left with that amount left, 218 out of the 240, I think, or 250 that it was we sent over right there, 218. So as you can see, that's a proper transaction. It went through, it's on the new exchange here. If we go back to our other exchange, we can see right here that we have deducted 260 right there. That's the amount that we took out. And then right here, here's the information that shows that it was sent on this time and here's the fee that was charged and everything went through and that's a proper transaction. So we go back to the other account here. We can see that this one is on this new exchange and it's ready to trade or store or whatever we want to do with it. So there it is. That's pretty much the fundamental how to move crypto from one exchange to another. The process doesn't vary too much from a centralized exchange to a decentralized exchange. As long as those fundamentals are there. You're sending it on the right network. You're sending the right token through the right means. It'll go through and it'll work just fine. And this will set you up for success with trading and investing. So I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please follow along for more, share and like the content. Okay, so here's an extra bonus just because the Harmony One token only had one platform or one network to use. And so, for example, as a for instance, if you want to send this AXS token and we want to withdraw our AXS and send it on the network and we're going to choose the network right here. Now we have options. So you can see ERC20 right here. ERC20 has a fee of 1.25 AXS and then it arrives in five minutes. And then Binance Smart Chain BEP20 sends in one minute. So this can fluctuate. And again, it's based on the amount that you're moving, the network congestion, and other factors. So if you have the option here, these are why they're there. And if you choose the right network, sometimes the platform that you're depositing to will tell you exactly what network to transfer from and what transfer to. And you can see right here, it says, make sure you have your withdrawal address and chain match each other. Otherwise you'll lose your assets. So it's important to keep note of that things because when you set up your wallet, it's gonna tell you what address and what network to use. These ones right here. So keep in mind of that. Okay. So as I said before, if you found this content helpful, please feel free to share the content and bookmark it. Your support helps me create more free content just like this. I'll have a link somewhere around this video to my link tree, which shows all the channels that I'm at online. If you like this video and you want to learn more, please follow me on these different platforms here. You can see the link tree linked somewhere around this video so you can see all the offers that I have online. I'm on Gab and Minds and Brideon and Rumble because these are platforms that support free speech and will not censor things like crypto and that supports the foundation of crypto. It is money for the people and I believe these platforms are the future and they are for the people and not manipulated by ad spend or big tech. So if you can get along with that, I think you'll really enjoy following my channel here. So hit the like or share or bookmark or follow me for more content here. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. And lastly, if you're not using TradingView as a tool to help you learn and TA and chart your tokens, you're missing out because this is probably the best platform to do this. You can use all sorts of indicators and there's a community on here to speak with and chat about your tokens and your ideas and i post some things on here from time to time i offer free trade setups and tools and tips and tutorials just like this here so feel free to follow me on trading view or find the link in the description below as my affiliate link uh, this is probably one of the best platforms out here to use to chart your tokens and help you make money online so thanks again for watching the video i appreciate your support i'll see you in the next one